Well, hello there and welcome to the channel. My name is Derek and today I'm going to be doing a review of the Akai MPC Key 61. And I wanted to do another review. I did a review previously on this channel and I will put it somewhere up here in the video and a link in the description below where I went over the entire keyboard, did an overview, uh, covered the back panel, all the ins and outs and so on and so forth. But now that I've had it for a while, I've had a chance to really get with it really use it in the studio. I wanted to give you guys a glimpse into my workflow, talk about the things that I really do like about it and some of the things that I don't. And hopefully I can help somebody make a buying decision on this keyboard or just sit and talk about keyboards to people who really like this kind of thing. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so here we are now in front of the MPC uh, key. And uh, I must say, I really do like this keyboard. Um, I do like the build quality of it for its price range. I think it's very, very good. Yes, it's not a metal chassis. It is a plastic chassis, but it's a, it's still very solid. Um, I have no issues. Um, I've had no issues with it as far as, you know, um, gigging with it, like feeling like anything was going to break or anything like that. So no kind of issues or problems like that whatsoever. Uh, <clears throat> whatsoever. So, um, and I've been gigging with the MPC one. <clears throat> I've been gigging with the MPC one now for years and I've not had any kind of problems with that uh, whatsoever. Now I do take care of my stuff. So, you know, it's not just, uh, I don't just be throwing it in the back of a truck and it's banging around and stuff like that and no case and all that. I don't do that kind of thing, but um, build quality and stuff is very good. I do like the layout of the MPC key 61. Uh, fun fact, the MPC key 61 does have more buttons than the MPC live, the MPC live two and the MPC one. And, um, and so I'm loving the, um, the workflow that I can, uh, have with this, but let's go ahead and get into it because, you know, in my other video, I covered all the buttons and everything. And <clears throat> in this video, let's go ahead and get into some things that I really do like. So first things first here, the user interface. I really like the user interface quite a bit. Just going to select the, uh, studio piano here and, uh, EP, and, uh, we can go here and look at this, uh, interface. So I love this, uh, interface. All your various parameters and stuff are right here in front of you where you can make your edits. Um, I, right now I'm on suitcase, but I can change suitcase to whirly if I wanted to. Right. And, uh, and there's also a piano. Right, so let me just go back to suitcase. So, and I can change the style. You know, you got different styles here. We got a reel, right? So I can go to reel. And then we have a soft. And then we have a hard. <clears throat> right, I can change the mechanics. Right now it's on mic, but I can change that to uh, FM if I wanted to as well. And, um, and then you got all your different parameters. So right here, I got my key offs. So if you're listening, you can hear the uh, key offs now. <clears throat> Just add some of that realism and stuff there. So love that as well. And, uh, and then you have, you know, your, your model, um, volume here right um, then you got your volume you got a, a format here so as well you got dynamics you got age so I can come up and change the uh, age so if I just turn this around like this and just now Right, so I do uh, do love that there. Now I can adjust all these parameters with the Q-Link knobs as well. Whenever you see that little Q, that means you can use the Q-Link knobs, and it's going to tell you what this parameter, what this uh, what this is going to adjust. So right now this says uh, dynamic, so it's going to be adjusting that one. This one's going to be adjusting the age and so on and so forth, and it's kind of laid out in a logical fashion. So I can uh, use those to make some adjustments and stuff as well. 
And uh, right on the bottom here is we have, you know, various different parameters that we can go through. So this is my amp envelope. So you got your attack, your decay, your sustain and uh, release right here. Now we can turn the attack up here and see. Right, so if I want to do something like that, <clears throat> uh, that's available to me uh, to do. So you know your you know your attack decay, your sustain release. Uh, then we got our mechanics and stuff here as well. If I switch this from mic to FM, then FM uh, parameters uh, become available, and those go away, and uh, and then they come back. If I switch it over to mic, I've got my tremolo and chorus. Um, uh, parameters here. I got my amp uh, cabinet here. All right, so I can turn it on. And I can choose different ones. This terms the drive a little bit. And then, you know, moving right along, I've got uh, compression and EQ parameters I can adjust. And I've got some um, delay and reverb and stuff like that. And right now we've got a spring reverb and stuff like that going. So, and I can just, you know, I can turn off the EQ. I can turn off the compression, you know, just by hitting these little, you know, toggles here. All that kind of stuff. So, you know, I mean, in reality, there's nothing really earth shattering here. Now, so the question is, can you do this on a, a Yamaha montage? Um, sure, in a, in a roundabout way, yes, you can. Uh, can you do it on a Core Kronos? Uh, yeah, you can get some of these uh, same um, some of these same results on a Core Kronos. But the thing is, when it comes to the Yamaha montage, when it comes to the Core Kronos, and even the uh, the Roland Phantom, which is the newest one that came out in 2019, um, it's not this easy to do. Right. So if I wanted to add like, you know, amplifier, like amp effects, simulators, you're not just going to go to a tab and turn a knob and, and, and start working and going through all kinds of different. So this is one kind is this you know, direct box or, you know, DI, and then you got, you know, different models that you can choose from. Like you're not doing this in the other, in the competition. It's just, it's not this easy to do. Right. Um, my chorus and tremolo effects and mechanics and everything, you know, the attack decay, stay and release, uh, you know, you're just not doing it in the competition. So when you start comparing it to other keyboards and stuff on the market, you're not getting this, especially with the electric pianos. Now, I know that, um, you know, sounds are just a matter of opinion. And I will give my opinion on the electric piano sounds like these roads and, and suitcases and whirlies and stuff like that in this keyboard. Um, I think it is on par with every other keyboard out there on the market. Um, I think the only one I probably like better, I give a slight edge to, would be the core Kronos as far as realism is concerned. Um, but I like the electric pianos in this better than the Montage, better than the Modi X. Uh, you know, those are the same. Those are the same. I like it. I like the electric pianos in here better than the Roland Phantom. Uh, I like them better in here than the RD2000. I like the electric pianos in here uh, better than the Nord. Uh, Nord, I like the way Nord's electric piano sound, but as far as realism, with that kind of key off noise and stuff like that, uh, I'm not really getting that from, from the, from the Nord. So <clears throat> anyway, so again, I think the sound here 
mm-hmm. is on par with the other uh, major players. All right, now let's go back to my sounds button here. Uh, go back to the sounds, and um, and it's just so many different things that you can choose. Um, <clears throat> here's some uh, quartet. <laughs> And I can go to edit instrument and then you have all of these different parameters. Again, it's kind of laid out the same way. You got your tabs down at the bottom <clears throat> and your other and your knobs and stuff up here that you can adjust and some parameters and stuff here. And you can go through and you can change different things. I'm not going to really go through everything here, but there's so many different parameters and stuff that you can adjust. And it's right here, uh, right in front of you. If you want to adjust the sound and these are all the parameters for your uh, for your sound. You got dynamics, you got format, you got a sample rate, you got your. Uh, with you got to attack the K sustain release you got to cut off and and then it looks like you have a, a velocity right and then I can go to vibrato and I can adjust the various parameters under the vibrato tab here's after touch here's the mod wheel what they're going to be doing you got your pitch bin um, controls and stuff like that how that's all going to work and then I've got a legato setting and I can uh, adjust the legato settings and stuff like that with the strings then I got my flavor and EQ so like right now But I can come in here and I can just change this to a bass amp, right? There's a few bass amps and guitar amps. There's, that's a guitar mix. Oh, let me turn on flavor here. There we go. Now it's going to do it. So I can turn on the bass amp. Now listen here. Changes the sound. Uh, that's another bass amp. Here's a guitar amp. Like coming out of a guitar amp, you know, so there's all kinds of that's out of a boom box. Uh, so you can add a lot of different character and stuff like that um, to your, you know, your sounds and stuff like that. And it's all, you know, really at the touch of a button, really easy to do. Um, so just, you know, I'm just loving uh, the interface, right? And that really goes for, you know, a lot of the different ones here. So I just, you know, clicked on hype there and I uh, come over here to the macros and you know you got another you know another interface so you can you know adjust your different adjust your different parameters right and down at the bottom you got your different uh, tabs that you can pick so here's your filter your amp and stuff like that so you got your your cutoff you got your resonance you got your decay your spike uh, you got you know different effects and stuff and different distortions you can use you know your fingers here and you can just you know this is the eq right on the touch screen you know make your adjustments and stuff um now so the other keyboards on the market, like like the Roland Phantom, the uh, the Yamaha Montage, the Cork Nautilus. Um, I would argue that their parameters for um, sound design uh, most certainly go deeper than the uh, Akai MPC Key 61. Uh, but this has a lot of parameters that are, that are easy to um, access, and without somebody having to go through a manual and ask a bunch of questions on a forum you know, about how to adjust certain things and whatnot. Um, this is just a lot easier to use. And uh, to me, there's still a whole lot of parameters. I mean, as you can see, there's a lot of parameters in here that can be adjusted for every single thing. I can go over to my Mellotron and you just be... All right, we go to edit instrument and now we've got our, our Mellotron, right? And you can just go in here and, you know, all the different plugins and make all your different adjustments and stuff 
however you see fit and you have all of your you know tabs down here and then you can come in here and you can adjust things and i can literally just use my finger and do things i can use the q link knobs to adjust stuff so <clears throat> It's really, really cool uh, how this stuff works. And uh, I really do like, you know, how easy it is to get up and running and, and get tweaking and and uh, changing some different sounds and doing some different things. It's really um, it's really quite easy on this compared to like a Yamaha montage. Uh, uh, you know, I can't reiterate that enough. This is just more accessible. Go to my drum synth, pick up my kick. I mean, like it's just. I mean, I don't even know. I mean, look at this. You just have all your different parameters and your drum synth and blah, blah, blah. And you can really get in there and dial in, you know, your drums and stuff the way you want to. So it's just uh, really easy to, it's really easy to use. And it's nice to have a workstation that can do a whole lot of different things. And yet it doesn't feel like you are learning to fly a spaceship, right? I remember... Uh, the core Kronos, uh, you know, cause that keyboard, uh, I still have it and I still use it. And, but when I was originally learning how to use it, I mean, man, the, you know, the, the manual is over a thousand pages, you know, and I, I went through that manual cover to cover and, you know, spent many days, you know, bumping my head up against the wall, you know, trying to figure out how to do something that seemed like a rather basic thing but it's just really hard to figure out how to get the keyboard to do what you're trying to get it to do. Uh, not having any of those kind of issues when it comes to uh, the Akai MPC key um, 61. So really do love that. Really just love the, the interface. Now, okay, now let's get into uh, this over here. And um, so I have this, uh, I have this set up here. Well, it's not really set up. But we're going to get it set up. So uh, one of the things I really use uh, when it comes to the MPC key uh, is I use the sampler, right? I use the sampler because I use this keyboard. When I use this keyboard live, its main job is actually, believe it or not, is to play backing tracks. I use this to play my backing tracks and uh, I use my various sequences and stuff like that. Uh, to create you know backing tracks and so this is what I use so I have two keyboards on stage this keyboard will be on top and I uh, have another keyboard on the bottom it might be a, a, a Roland Phantom it could be the Montage it could be the Kronos it could be the RE2000 some other keyboard will be on the bottom and um, but this keyboard will be used to play all my backing tracks on my vocals and everything will come out of the MP key uh, MPC key 61 um, so let me just pull up a project really quickly. I'm just going to go to browse. Let's go to places real quick and let's grab something from here. Boom. And so we're just going to upload a project is saying, yeah, if, if I, you know, upload this project it's going to get rid of the other one. That's okay. And, uh, we'll just pull this project up here. So. Right, so this is a this is some backing tracks I've got going on here. Right, just a simple, you know, uh, this particular thing is just a simple like eight bar, uh, eight bar loop or whatever. So it's a uh, backing tracks. But I really do like so let's really get into it and kind of like break it down here. So there's actually four tracks on this backing track. Uh, one track is a track that I can play. That's my EP. So if we go like this, right? So that's, that's one track, right? But then I've got a guitar track as well. I can solo that. All right, so I got my guitar. I've got uh, a bass. All right, 
right? I've got a bass, and then track one is going to be drums. So when I'm playing a backing track, it's not just uh, an audio. When I when I play live, uh, I don't just have one audio track, you know, playing or some kind of a stereo track playing, and uh, you just hit play, and then you have your backing tracks. That's not that's not what I do. Uh, I have all of the tracks split up in the MPC key, uh, and it just gives me more flexibility. Uh, especially in a live scenario. So uh, oftentimes, uh, because one of the places that I play all the time is I play for a church and uh, sometimes I'm playing in different rooms. So one time you're playing in a small room and you just have one, you know, you may just have one speaker and uh, you're just coming out of one little 12 inch uh, speaker. Well, not little, but one 12 inch powered speaker, you know, like the QSC, what is this? QSC K dot or the QSC K.2 or 12.2s. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I'll be coming out of that. And then you're going to take the same keyboard and you're going to go into the main auditorium. And now you're dealing with a, a, a big, massive sound system with, you know, subwoofer. And, you know, a, it's going to be going through uh, a $15,000 mixer and all this kind of stuff. And, um, and so things can change as far as sound is concerned. And so when I'm tweaking my sounds and, you know, mixing stuff down and whatnot, uh, yes, you want to get a mix that translates onto a variety of systems, but it is nice to be able to come in, you know, 15 minutes before, you know, uh, 15 minutes before an event begins or whatever, and actually listen to your mix and make some adjustments. And I can do that really easily with the MPC key because the drums, right? So I have this drums here, these drums, but I've got every single um, drum sample. I've got it separated on the pad. So this is a kick. Right. And then the next one is going to be the snare. Right. I've got hi-hats right here. So there's hi-hats. And then I have a crash. So they're all, um, they're all separate. They're all separated. So literally I can come in here. I can come to my kick. And uh, let's come up here, hit this little eye ball, and I'm going to come over here to my pad effects, right? And with the MPC key, this is another great thing about the MPC, is um, I can apply four insert effects, up to four insert effects on every single pad, right? And because my drums are broken up by pad, right? because they're broken up by pad, I can add four insert effects to every single pad. So if I get to a venue and let's say when I, you know, when I play, I play the drums and maybe the sound system's not that great. And uh, maybe I've got to, you know, beef up, you know, the bass or something, you know, in the, in the kick or something, I can do that and come over here. Oh, no, nope, let's go back. Cause I'm on the wrong pad. We'll select and we'll select the first pad there and I can come and click here and now it opens up my four available um, insert effects and um, like I do is click here and uh, let's go to dynamics and I'm going to add in a channel strip right <clears throat> perfect and I can come over here and I can edit uh, the channel strip and now these effects are only going to be affecting just the first pad, which is just my kick. So if I want to come over here and I want to add some gain to the low end, to the bass. Perfect, right? So now I can come over here. Oh, excuse me. Come back to my main. And uh, I'm going to select uh, the second pad, which is going to be my snare. Coming to my insert effects. I get four insert effects for that pad specifically. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to add a channel strip. Right, I'm gonna hit the pencil to do uh, some edits. And let's just say on that, I want to turn up the mids and it's a sweepable. So I get my frequencies here. Right, so now, and just that fast, I made those, uh, I made those adjustments to a backing track um, and it doesn't take that long and I can really do it and dial in my sounds, how I want them to sound. You know, I can get in there and do some, you know, dialing in of some things. Um, I can do it with this 
really quickly, you know, 15 minutes before an event begins. I can do it uh, like a mini sound check or something on my own, right? And I could do it really quickly. Uh, other keyboards, if you're going to be trying to play backing tracks and stuff from it, you know, you're not going to have that same kind of flexibility. Uh, most certainly not. You're not going to be able to do this with a Roland Phantom. Uh, you can kind of do it with a Core Chronos, but uh, it's not going to be this easy to easy to access. So I got this snare here, right? I can come over here. Now I can come over to my gate and uh, compression, and I can just uh, adjust here. So we go. All right, you see that? The compression. All right, now if I come back to the main, solo it. And just like that, I've altered, you know, altered the drums, right? I right, come over here, let's go to the guitar, right? Let's do some things for the guitar. So the guitar, the whole, the whole entire um, uh, loop is on one, it's on one pad, right? But I can do the same thing. I've got my insert effects. I can come in, let's say, yeah, I wanted to change something. I can come down here for a guitar. We're going to adjust the modulation instead. What are we going to add? Uh, let's add a chorus, right? Okay. That's without the chorus. That's with the chorus, right? Come back to my main and play your thing. And just like that, I just made adjustments to a backing track that I've already recorded, that I've already laid down, and I can literally just adjust the kick and literally just adjust the snare, literally just adjust the guitar. And uh, of course, not only that, but I can come into my uh, mix here, right? So I can come into my mix and I can, you know, I can adjust the different levels of all of my different tracks and stuff like that. And, uh, and this is all audio. So this is not, um, this is not MIDI. So it's not using any MIDI to play back what it's playing. And what that does for me is let's go back to my main here and, uh, Oh, I've got it all changed up. I changed the sound, but So what that does is I can play freely and I don't have to worry about running out of polyphony because I have so many instruments playing in the background. Now, here's the deal. If you take a the the Roland Phantom, right? Now I love the Roland Phantom. The Roland Phantom is actually my main keyboard in the studio and oftentimes it is my main studio playing live, but it is I Love the the new Roland Phantom, and I use it all the time. Um, but if you use the sequencer in the Roland Phantom, and then you play live, right? You got to keep in mind that uh, your guitar is going to be taking up polyphony, and your bass is going to be taking up polyphony, and your drums are going to be taking up polyphony, and your horns, and your strings, and your pad, and whatever else you have going on, it's all going to be using polyphony. Right, because you're not playing audio tracks, you're playing MIDI tracks. So let me you're playing over it. You know, there is the opportunity to actually run out of voices, and I do run out of voices quite quickly on the Roland Phantom, believe it or not. Uh, and the same thing, you, you know, if I'm going to be playing, you know, backing tracks, and I've got some MIDI and stuff hooked up some kind of way, or I'm going to use the sequencer that is in the uh, Yamaha montage and I'm going to be using that live hey, hey that's great but you just have to keep in mind when you have those guitars and stuff going and different you know things and stuff playing yeah you're going to be using polyphony once again okay um, the Korg Kronos right you can use audio tracks and so you can use backing tracks and stuff like that uh, but with the Korg Kronos it's a little bit more difficult because like right now the way I have it set up I mean, I don't have another sequence set up for this one, uh, but when I play live, I normally have different sequences happening 
uh, let me just kind of show you here. Let's go to my, uh, let's go to menu and let's go to next sequence. So right now, uh, there's only one sequence in this project and uh, it's this right here. And if I hit it here and hit play, then it plays my backing tracks. However, um, if I put another sequence here, I can just hit this pad and it would hop to the next sequence. So this would be like intro verse. The first one would be intro verse. Then the second one would be, you know, uh, maybe a bridge or something like that or a chorus, probably a chorus. And then you have a bridge on this one. And so I can go through my various pads and I'll be literally going through the song and it does everything in time, just like at Ableton Live. If I wanted to switch back and do the intro, I can do the intro. If I want to do the bridge over and over again, I can do the bridge over and over again. That kind of flexibility uh, is a lot harder to, it's a lot harder to do that in a, a chord Kronos. Um, it can kind of be done using the keys and some different things, but it is nothing, and I say it is nothing like this. So I really use this for backing tracks and um, I just love that, uh, love that aspect about it. And again, you know, I can come in here and I can adjust, you know, whatever I want to, adjust you know like oh adjust the guitar i can put effects and stuff on it if i want to and whatnot and uh, i can really do that live you know i can get a whole sound check and stuff done and get things edited and uh, up and running and um and i mean and i can do it really really quickly i mean considering that the core chrono takes like three minutes just to come on um i can get this on up you know, get the stuff loaded and, and I'm, I'm off to the races and doing what I need to do. So I really do love that, uh, love that aspect of the keyboard. So that's how I use, that's how I use a sampler. Um, now it does have an auto sampler. I've used the auto sampler and I've played around with it and put some sounds and stuff in it. Um, and, uh, and that's great for doing multi samples. You don't have to sit there and go through all the velocity layers and stuff yourself. Uh, you can use the multi sampler in here and it will create what's called a key group and then you can play you know sounds from other keyboards and stuff like that uh in there as well but me personally i don't really do uh that much sampling um but i do a lot of like backing tracks and stuff like that i mean i shouldn't say i don't do that much sampling i do sampling to get the backing tracks but i do um i don't do that much like multi-sampling and stuff to get sounds from other keyboards but this is uh, more than capable of doing that, um, doing that as well. So I really do like that aspect of it. Okay. So let's see, let's go. I'm just going to go to a brand new project. See how this, <laughs> let's see how this goes. We're going to go to a new project. Um, I'm just say don't save cause I don't want to mess that up. And we're just going to go to a new project here. And we'll just wait for it to do its thing. And we're going to say empty project. So now we've got an empty project. Now, I don't know why they did this. That when you load up a brand new uh, project, um, it literally gives you, you know, four, uh, four different tracks with plugins and stuff on it. Uh, I wish they would just, you know, when they did it, that they would just, it would just be empty and blank, right? And then you could start and you could load whatever you want to. So uh, right now, as it sits, because there's four plugins in there, it's actually taking up 25% of the uh, onboard memory with just uh, just those plugins, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to erase some of these plugins. Come in here and we're gonna delete this, delete, and we're gonna come to our next one and delete it as well. Uh, come to our next one here and go here and delete. So now it's all deleted and I just now I just have one plug in. I come up here, look at the memory. 14% uh, is being used, right? So one of the m major limitations for the MPC key 61 is that you can only have eight plugins um, you can only have eight plugins in a project simultaneously. You you only get eight. Now, if you are using a controller mode and you're going to, you know, uh, hook it up to your computer and use it with the MPC uh, software, then you don't have the eight, uh, you don't have the eight limit, right? Uh, you can, 
just keep adding plugins. You can use plugins from third parties and all kinds of stuff because then essentially the NPC key just becomes a controller and you are using your computer just like you'd be using any other DAW. And of course the DAW integration is seamless with the NPC key and the NPC uh, software. I personally, I use Ableton Live. I don't use the NPC software. I bought an NPC key specifically really to be uh, more standalone than working with a uh, than working with a doll, um, but with that said, so you get uh, you get uh, eight plugins, and this has been one of the major things that uh, a lot of people have have been complaining about because it's like okay, so you get you get a hundred and twenty eight tracks. I can go all the way up here, and you can see I can go all the way up to one hundred and twenty eight tracks. So it's like wow, you get one hundred and twenty eight tracks of MIDI. Uh, and a MIDI, and I say MIDI because MIDI can house uh, audio, like those backing tracks I was playing before. They're actually on MIDI tracks, uh, but MIDI tracks can play audio because they can play any sample that you put in there. Uh, and then you get uh, you get eight audio tracks as well. So you get eight audio tracks, and you get um, eight uh, eight plugins, and you get 128 tracks. And so sometimes the question is, well. With 128 tracks, but you can only use eight plugins. Like, what can you really do with that? I mean, <laughs> what are you going to really record? What are you really going to, what are you really going to do with you know uh, just eight plugins? Because once you use your eight plugins, then you you're you're kind of out of instruments. So this whole this whole array, six thousand different sounds. Now it's not technically six thousand different sounds because Fabric and Fabric XL are actually the same exact sounds. The Fabric XL just takes, I mean, the Fabric just takes less memory than the Fabric XL. Uh, fabric Piano is like the Stage Piano, but it takes less memory than a Stage Piano. Uh, the Stage EP and the Fabric Electric Piano are the same, have the same sounds, but the, the uh, Electric Piano takes less memory. So these are less memory intensive, the ones down here, versus the ones, you know, the Fabric XL, the Stage Piano, and the Stage EP. Um, so I'm not really sure how many sounds it has, but it has thousands of sounds. You got thousands of sounds and you got hundreds of tracks, but you only have eight slots that you can use for your plugins. And so that is a quite a serious uh, limitation, right? But I think uh, no one is really, I don't see a whole lot of people talking about it. Uh, so yes, when it comes to playing live, I'm gonna, if I'm going to actually play live, let's go back to my sounds here and go to my key ranges. If I'm going to play live and I'm going to load up a bunch of plugins and stuff like that, I'm only going to be at a layer split and stuff like that. Eight plugins at once, only eight. Um, and that's for playing live. So if I'm actually going to be playing playing everything live, um, I'm going to be limited to eight and people, and some people are just like, that's an absolute deal breaker. You know, you get 16 on the, uh, you know, on the Roland Phantom and the Roland Phantom O and, and, and whatnot. And so, and the court corners gives you 16 and the Nautilus gives you 16, you know, what's the deal? You only get eight on here. Um, and so I just kind of want to explain. So first of all, the Yamaha Montage and the Yamaha Modi X, they give you eight. You can only control eight parts at a time from your actual key bed, you know, and all your parameters with super knob and all that kind of stuff. You can only control eight sounds at a time. So it was not completely unheard of that you could only control eight or play eight at once, right? It is a limitation, and it's even a limitation on the Yamaha Montage and stuff like that. But with the Yamaha Montage, right? This is the flagship Yamaha, been making this kind of stuff forever. Uh, a piano, like their flagship piano sounds in the Yamaha Montage, they actually take up four parts. So you're not really getting eight if the piano is gonna take up four, right? And it's gonna leave you with four left. Um, with this, that's not the case. You know, a piano, no matter which piano you choose, you could choose the best piano in here that you like. It's only going to take up one track where in the Yamaha Montage, it may take up four. It may take up five. It may take up, you know, they got multi-part sounds. Some of their multi-part sounds take up all eight. Um, so it's just the way, just the way it works. But 
let's really get into this. I'm just going to uh, pick another sound. Let's just go to the EP. You know, it's right there. It's really easy. And I like the way the EP sound in this thing. Let's go back to my main. And so now, I've got my plug in here, my EP, and uh, my track. Now, your track houses MIDI and your program, this is the plugin program, this is where you're getting the sound. So this keeps track of the MIDI, this keeps track of your sound, and this is your sequence, right? So I'm gonna come up here to my sequence here. I'm just gonna change it to 100, um, and let's make it an eight bar loop. I'm gonna record something really quickly. Let's go ahead and name the track. So I'm going to name it, uh, we'll just call it EP. We're going to say do it, and then that's called EP. We're going to name this as well. And this is one of the things I do when I'm using the MPC is I, you know, name my tracks and stuff like that to keep everything organized. So now instead of just being called plugin one, it's called EP. This is called EP. All right, let's record something real quick. What am I going to record? Uh, let's go. So I've got that recorded now. So let's say, for instance, let's say I really like that and uh, I wanted to keep it right. So this is what I do. This is how I work, right? So I'm going to come into my EP here and I'm going to actually copy this track and I can do that simply by hitting the pencil icon and hit copy track and say where I want it to go I'm going to put it on well let's put it on track 50 you know something way down there that I know I'm not going to use 50 tracks in total for the project and I'm going to change its name to EP MIDI oh, if, we can, if, if we can spell MIDI that would be great um Perfect, that'll work. And just say, do it. And now we're gonna say, do it again. So now if I go over here, if I scroll up to track 50, I have the same exact thing. I got my EP, I got my plugin, everything. Uh, it's the same exact thing if I hit play. They're both, uh, tr uh, track number one and track number 50 are both playing at the same time, right? So I'm gonna come in here now I'm going to go back to uh, my track number one and we're just going to solo track. All right, perfect. That's what we have in that track. Now, this is what I can do. OK, so let's say I really like that. I like that sound and so on and so forth. I've duplicated. I, you know, I, I've copied the track and whatnot. I can actually come in here to my plugin. And uh, let's go like this. I'm going to hit this here. And uh, there's a feature here. It's called bounce to sample. So I can bounce this audio to a sample. That's what I'm going to do. We can hit bounce to sample. And it's going to go through and it's going to export what I did. So now I have bounced that to a sample. Okay. So I can come over here and I can literally clear this track. Right, so now this track is completely clear. It's not using a plugin or anything like that. And uh, now I'm going to change this over to a drum program, and uh, we're going to assign samples. I'm going to go assign samples, and I can assign it to a pad. There we go. So there's my sample. Right, so there's my sample. Now it's on that pad. So I can hit record. One, two, three, four. And that's all I need to do. Solo it. Because the same thing is playing on track number 50, right? So let me go over to track number 50. That's why we have the sustain, different things going on. I can actually turn this 
I can actually clear this. So we're going to come over here and I'm going to hit uh, delete, hit delete. Right. So now there are no plugins loaded up in the system. None. Zero plugins loaded up. Go back to my track number one. OK, and I can hit play. And I have all of my available slots for plugins open again because now it's it's now it's an audio sample. Now you would say, OK, well, it's an audio sample, which means if you want to adjust, you know, any kind of mini parameters or something like that, you can't do it. Um, and that's why people oftentimes use MIDI because it keeps you from having to commit. You know, when you once you turn something to audio, you are more committed to whatever it is that you did. However, remember, I copied the track on track 50, right? And remember, a track houses MIDI. So I call this EP MIDI. If I come over here into the grid view and I go like this, here's all of the MIDI for that for that track. So here all here's all the MIDI right here. I preserve the MIDI and I got rid of the plugin. So I still have the MIDI. I have the audio that I need. And if I wanted to make some changes, so let's say I got down the road in the process and said, you know what? Um, this track one here, let me go back to my main, this track one, I don't, um, I think it would sound better as an acoustic piano, right? Now, if it was just purely MIDI, I mean, if it's purely audio, you couldn't change it to an acoustic piano, you'd have to re-record it. But again, I have saved the MIDI. So I can come over here, let's go to track number 50. Right. And this is me pretending like I've gotten, you know, far down in the in my recording process and then decided, mm, let's change that to an acoustic piano. All I have to do is come in here and uh, add a plug in. Boom. And then I can come to my sounds and I can pick uh, an acoustic piano. We'll just do the standard. We'll do the C7 grand. Right. So now we have that set up. And I've hit play here. There's your acoustic piano. OK, and I can come over here and uh, we're going to call this. Uh, let's call it uh, grand. We'll just call it grand for a grand piano. And I'm going to say do it. And now I can do the same thing. I can come in here and I can say bounce to sample. So now I have bounced that acoustic piano to a sample. I can come back to my, you know, my first track over here, right? And I can go to my sample assign. I can assign samples. And now I can come down here to my grand and I can apply it to that pad. So now that it's applied to that pad, when I come back to my song just to play the song, it's now an acoustic piano. So I was able to edit it that way. Now, if I go back to track number 50, I can go back to track 50 if I want to, right? And I can come in here and I can actually delete, uh, we'll delete the plugin. So now the plugin is gone. Now this is taking me a little longer because I'm talking, I'm kind of talking through it as I'm doing it. Uh, but it really doesn't take me very long to do that. I can easily preserve the MIDI. So the MIDI is still, I can come in here at the grid, the MIDI is still preserved. Right. If I wanted to make another change, all I got to do is come in, change the plug in. If I wanted to change the notes and stuff around, maybe I messed up, hit a wrong note or something. I can do all of that uh, in here and come in and change the notes and do all the different things that you would do um, and do all the things you would do in in your piano roll. So I could move notes around. I could stretch them out. I could do whatever. And then, like, you know, just come back to my main or whatever and then hit, you know, uh, suck my plug in and stuff like that. And then bounce it to a sample so I can keep changing it. So when I'm actually working and doing production work, yeah, I could use 120, 128 different plugins, right? 
uh, I just can't have them all loaded into the RAM simultaneously, but they can all be in my project. So I really do like that. So when I, when I'm using it, I'm recording stuff and doing stuff in here, you know, uh, this is what I do. I bounce stuff to samples. I preserve the MIDI. And, uh, if I need to go back and take up, pick up that MIDI later, that's what I'll do. So there is a way, yes, you only get eight plugins. And again, if you're, if you're playing live, you can only layer eight at a time with the velocity layers and stuff for that. You can only do eight. Uh, but if you're doing production, it's not like you're limited to using eight plugins in your production. And if you, need to use more than eight plugins then you need to plug it into a computer that is not the case you can always bounce the sample and you can preserve the midi okay so um that's how that works i just want to show people that that don't let the whole eight plugin thing you know deter you from buying it oh you only got eight plugins and you got a hundred and something tracks you know what are we going to do uh there's a way around that all right so i said it in my last video and i'll say it in this video uh i believe uh, that the MPC key uh, 61, I believe that it can really, it could really use, um, it could just really use, um, it could just really use streaming, um, just streaming directly from a, directly from a disc, uh, because let's go in here, we're going to change this to a plugin. And um, uh, let's go to my sounds. Yeah, whatever. EP again. Right. Just that uh, just so you don't have to have that, you know, that that loading time. Um, So you don't have that loading time between sounds. Uh, for a lot of people, uh, that is a major turnoff. For me, it's not really a turnoff. Uh, again, when I use this live, is it my top keyboard? It's not my main keyboard that's being played. I use it for playing backing tracks, and then I load some sounds and stuff up to it, and I use the keys as my aux board and stuff as as well. But most of the time when I'm playing live, I don't need to do a split second change where I'm changing sounds right away. That's not something that I need to do, but other people do need to do that. And with seamless sound transitions kind of be, uh, being a standard and stuff right now, it would be nice if you could stream from the disc and you got seamless sound um, transitions. Um, also, if you are going to, you know, maybe load up different, you know, projects and stuff like that uh, as well. If you're going to load a project, loading a project is going to take you know, loading a project is going to take some serious time. I come over here. I'm going to come over to places. Uh, let's go down here and I'm going to load a. Load a project. Say, yep. Okay. And loading a project like this one is not particularly all that big, but you know, you have to wait that time um, to be able to do that. <laughs> So, you know, just a lot of times, depending on somebody's scenario, you know. You know, people don't have the time to, to wait for that. And so that's going to be a turn off. Uh, I know that the uh, the Akai Force has some sort of streaming of some kind uh, that really needs to be implemented into the MPC key. Just kind of like the uh, the Korg Nautilus and the Korg Kronos where they have streaming. So it only has, you know, like three gigs of RAM inside or four gigs, maybe three, I think. But um, it only needs to load up a small part of a file into the actual RAM and everything else is streamed off the disk. And uh, the uh, the Core Chronos came out in 2011. Right. So there's no reason why a keyboard that has just come out just now can't have streaming. I, I see it as a must if it's going to be. Um, a serious contender for people who are going to use it for live playing. Now me, I do a lot of backing tracks and stuff like that. I record my own vocals and stuff and I have backing vocals, backing guitars, backing whatever. Right. And, um, 
and then I just, you know, flip through my various sequences and stuff like that. And the song follows me along and, and whatever. And that's how I use it. But I understand that a lot of people, probably the majority of people playing live are playing in cover bands. And, uh, if you're doing kind of a medley of songs together and you're switching from one song to another song, to another song, to another song, to another song, and you got, you know, different splits and different things you got going on and stuff like that. Um, right now, uh, the other workstations and synthesizers that are on the market i think that they're a they're a better fit than this now you can make this work uh with the eight sounds and you can unmute stuff and mute stuff and split things and you know and, and put some stuff on the pads and trigger certain things you can kind of make it work but to me it is not the best tool for that but if they implemented streaming and you had seamless sound transitions and uh you could have more than one project at least kind of ready to go uh, at the same time, or you could stream a project off the disc or something like that. Um, it would really, really, uh, go a long way. Um, they really go a long way. So now let me address something else. Uh, let's address the bugs in the system all over the web. You know, one of the major things that people have been talking about is the bugs with the Akai MPC key. Uh, and it's not just the Akai MPC key. It is just Akai's products in general um you know they all suffer from the same bugs and i will be very honest when it comes to the bugs that are in the system i have run into more bugs in the akai mpc key um that i have ever run into with my yamaha roland kurzweil um it, 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 Korg, any of the other keyboards that I play, they all have little bugs and little glitches and little things, but I have run into more bugs with, uh, with the Akai, right. Uh, than than any, uh, than any other manufacturer, right. Um, and yeah, so it is what it is. You just, you just, I've ran into more bugs with this right now. Now the bugs that I've been kind of running into, I run into stuff like, uh, it might, you know, during, uh, when I'm loading a project up or doing something or moving something really quickly, uh, normally when I'm nor normally when I'm trying to load a project or do something or something, I, it, it would like freeze for a second and sometimes it gets going again and sometimes it doesn't. Um, I've, you know, I've heard heard of other people, not me, but other people like, oh, they're trying to, you know, save. And while they're trying to save, it freezes. And so it doesn't save their <laughs> save their progress. And so they 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 lose their project. Now, for me, I'm always saving. I'm coming in and I'm saving over and over again when I'm working on this. I'm saving, 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 saving. So technically speaking, if I did hit save one time and it didn't save, I wouldn't really lose that much. I really do treat it much like I treat a computer. Right. So, yes, it has it has some, you know, there's some bugs, some quirky things that take place. I think depending on your workflow and what you're using it for, different people are going to run into different things that other people don't run into because it's so versatile. It can be used in a variety of different ways. Um, now, when I say I've run into more bugs in here than my other equipment, it's not to say I've run into a whole lot of bugs with this. Um, and it's just riddled with bugs everywhere. It's just that, uh, Roland is just far less, but I mean, I, I haven't run into any bugs with the Roland, uh, phantom I've heard of bugs. Um, or maybe one, I ran into one bug where the, the rhythm, like the rhythm patterns and the preset drum patterns that are in there, it would froze and then would start again kind of on its own. Uh, so I did run into that one, I guess, uh, I don't really use the rhythm patterns, but I've, I've run into that and I've seen some other little stuff online, you know, little things or whatever, but you know, every day kind of playing the, you know, keyboard and just kind of using it and stuff like that. I haven't really run into any bugs with that. Uh, I haven't ran into, I know they exist, but I haven't ran into any bugs with the, uh, Yamaha montage or the Yamaha Modi X, no bugs there. Uh, the core Kronos bugs. I think I ran into a few or something over the course of the years, but you know, but it is, you know, very rare that I'm running to any kind of bugs. Uh, they pretty much work as advertised. Um, I haven't really run into any serious bugs with this though. I haven't run into anything that stops me from using it or anything that hurts my confidence in it. Uh, again, I've been using it live playing backing tracks and stuff like that. It has never stopped. It is never frozen. Uh, it is never, you know, 
done anything in a live performance. Only when I'm, you know, at home and I'm you know, maybe pressing through some stuff and going back and going through different menus and something like that. And I might run into some sort of a glitch or have to do something again. Like, Hey, how come that didn't take, you know? Um, and I might have to, you know, whatever. And, uh, it was a few times where I had to kind of restart it and start it over again, but I haven't run into any more restarts and any more having to fix stuff and work stuff out. Uh, I run into way more issues using a windows PC, way more issues using a windows pc now when it comes to a windows pc and all the drivers and you know you got stuff updating and you're and you're trying to keep it from updating and you go you're going in and you turn the updates off but it updates anyway and then when you hook your keyboards and stuff up to it again now they don't work you know uh i've ran into far more bugs far more freezing in ableton live uh when i'm you know using a daw and stuff like that far more hey i gotta restart it start over again you know way more issues uh using a software setup um than i have with this so you know i would i want you to kind of you know put it put it in put it a little bit in perspective it's not so buggy where the the unit is just 100 percent completely unusable uh i do run into some glitches and akai is working on you know fixing those uh fixing those glitches uh now in general I would like it if Akai, when they come out with a product, that they have their beta testers really run this thing through its paces so that when you bring a product to market, it is done. This video has gone on long enough. I thank you guys for sticking with me on this update on the Akai MPC Key 61. Hopefully I've said something or shown you something uh, that you can use uh, to make either a buying decision, or if you already own something like this, maybe you got some ideas on how you can use it as well. Anyway, that's it. It's a very versatile product as all workstations really are, and you can use them in a multiplicity of different ways. Thanks for sticking with me on this video. And, uh, I will see you guys on the next video.